Dudley. Good morning, Discovery. Good morning, Discovery. Good morning, DMS. I'm Patrick. I'm Crow. And, and this, this is our 29th show. And what are you doing? Driving a streetcar. Well, let's take a look at Audrey's streetcar experience. <laughs> you may have already heard about one of Kansas City's most groundbreaking new projects, the streetcar. Now I'm going to tell you some more about it. Some cities such as San Francisco, as we all know, and Denver, pictured here, have streetcars of their own. Thanks to Donna Mandelbaum, the KC Streetcar Marketing and Communications Coordinator, I was able to tour the facility and go on one of the streetcars. So we broke ground in May 2014 um, on the streetcar project. So the project is about $102 million and we are actually on budget and on time. So we're pretty happy about that. So our streetcars travel with the traffic that's on Main Street. Streetcar speeds depend on the traffic. Some places they can get up to 25 to 30 miles per hour, but in places such as downtown, they can only go about 10 to 15. The streetcars can transport over 2,700 people per day, and each car can hold at max 150 people. One special feature of the KC streetcars is level boarding. Which means those that are in wheelchairs, parents with strollers, if you have a scooter or a bicycle, you could just roll onto the streetcar and so This is off. the area with fold up seats. So this is where our wheelchair friends would go, bicycles, strollers, stuff like that. I would say hundreds and hundreds of people have been involved in this project, so it's been actually um, a real job creator from both the design and the construction. There are four streetcars, each with 34 seats, and there's standing and sitting room. And here's the best part, the streetcars are free to ride. The streetcars are coming soon. And another thanks to Donna Mandelbaum for making this experience happen. And remember Discovery, be safe, be smart, and follow the rules in riding the streetcars. Have a good weekend! Audrey's got her special hat. <laughs> On March 18th, Allegiant came out, and I asked a couple of students and a teacher about what they think about the series. What was the difference between the first two movies and the books? Uh, there was actually quite a bit of a difference. The first movie followed fairly well with the book. I really did enjoy the books quite a bit. Um, and the movie, I thought, was very fast-paced. They had good, you know, uh, graphics, and um, they followed the characters pretty well. So I, I liked Divergent quite a bit. Um, Divergent um, was a little bit more off. I kept turning. I actually went with Miss Sampson, for those of you who know Miss Sampson. And she and I kept going, wait, that, that wasn't in the book, that wasn't in the book, and so we're a little bit picky about that, but we still enjoyed the movie, we thought it was a good overall experience. Basically, the book just, like, um, had more different parts to the story, and the movie just, like, had the main story, just left out the details. The book is a lot more detailed than the movie, and the movie leaves out a lot of parts. With Diversion, there was just like little differences that they like cut out of the book. Um, and with, with Insurgent, um, in the book, they didn't have like any action. They were just like settling down. And then in the movie, they made it like more action packed and eventful. And did you like the movie or the book better? I always like books better. <laughs> so I'm a book nerd and I just enjoy um, using my own imagination. I do think it's fun to see the movies and I often hope for a movie, but I'm usually disappointed. Uh, with Divergent, I'm really indifferent, but with Insurgent, I definitely liked the movie better. It had more action. Are you excited for Allegiant coming out? I am, to a degree. Yes. I think it'll be really good and way better than the book. On April 25th, 2011, the first book of the Divergent series was released by Veronica Roth. Now that you know more about the Divergent series, I recommend that you go read you it. ever wondered who this teacher was walking the halls? Well, let's do a teacher spotlight on him to find out more.
He is the ISS teacher, and his name is Mr. Brown. Let's start out asking Mr. Brown a few fun fact questions. What is your favorite restaurant? Buffalo Wild Wings. What is your least favorite restaurant? Outback Steakhouse. Will you describe your recent experience at Outback Steakhouse? Uh, yes, uh, the service was terrible. Um, for example, I ordered a well-done steak. My wife ordered a well-done steak also. And our steaks came out medium. Um, my father-in-law ordered, I don't forget what he ordered, but they didn't bring all of his food out like they should have. Um, I ordered steak and shrimp. They never, they didn't bring my shrimp out until I said something about it and things like that. Will you ever go back to Outback after a negative experience? No. Have you ever heard of Brett Farb Steakhouse? <laughs> Yes, I have. Have you ever been contacted by a Hall of Fame quarterback <laughs> from the Green Bay Packers? No, I haven't. <laughs> I somebody made up an email, but made up a fake email. Brett Favre Steakhouse from Brett Favre Steakhouse. Have you ever received a free jeans coupon for a job well done? <laughs> Who put you up to this? Nobody, I promise. No. Who put you up to this? Nobody. Interview is over until you tell me who put you up to this. Nobody. That's it. <laughs> I'm not interviewing anymore. This is, hope you learned a little bit more about a staff member in our school. This is Brooklyn signing off from Discovery Broadcasting. Have a good Friday. So many people around the world use Snapchat. In 2011 of September, Evan Spengel, Bobby Murphy, and Reggie Brown created the app. About 1.5 billion people use Snapchat monthly. After looking at some websites, some of the most popular effects currently on Snapchat are, one of them is the puppy dog, which pretty much is a dog with a nose and puppy ears. And when you open the mouth, the tongue comes out. This effect came out February the 1st of 2016. Also, you can't forget the rainbow. Pretty much what this does is when you open your mouth, it looks like you're throwing up a rainbow and your eyes get really big. This effect was created September 15th of 2015. This filter was actually created with an app and it's a filter of what time it is during the day and some people use it because they think it looks cool with their pictures and that's pretty much why it's really popular. What's your longest streak? If so, with who? My longest streak is with And last but not least, one of the most popular is the face swap. Pretty much whatever you can detect your face with, it will swap places with it. You can do it with the person or whatever the app will let you detect it with. There have been some pretty interesting swaps. This effect was released in March 3rd of 2016. There is just a little bit about Snapchat. There are much more effects you can do with your pictures and videos. Get the app now and see all kinds of things you can do with Snapchat. I recommend having parents' approval before getting. This is Aspen signing off from DMS Broadcasting. Wow, I guess I need to try Snapchat more often. <laughs> I need a new phone. <laughs> you think it's on a road? Are the Legends a good place to buy them? Let's look at Michael's segment on Zona Rosa versus Legends. Have you heard about the battle between Zona versus Legends? Zona Rosa and Legends Outlet Mall are both shopping centers that are highly used by the people living in the Kansas City area. Zona Rosa was made in 2004, back when LeBron James was only in his second year playing with the Cavaliers. Zona Rosa also has many stores like Dick's Sporting Goods, Dillard's, and Barnes and Noble. With many places to eat like Granite City and Buffalo Wild Wings. With Legends being built in 2006, having the Kansas Speedway and Hollywood Casino and many more places all around it. With having stores like the Nike Outlet, Under Armour Outlet, and places to eat like T-Rex Cafe. We asked some students which one they thought was better. Do you know what Legends and Zona Rosa are? They're both sort of shopping centers. Yes, they're both outlet malls. Yeah. Which do you think is better out of the two? 
Personally, I think Zona Rosa is better just because it's closer to my house than Legends is. Obviously, Legends, I mean, they have a nice movie theater. They have Dave and Buster, and then they have, like, all types of stores. Like, they even have their own Nike store and Under Armour store. It's just overall better. Like, Zona Rosa cannot compare to Legends. That's, like, two different things. Which do you think is better? I think Zona Rosa is better because it's close to where I live, and it has all my favorite stores, like Zoomies and Paxson. Which one do you think is better, DMS? Have a great weekend. Samsung versus iPhone. Only one can win the battle. The two products have been upgrading year by year, and people are saying that these phones might be the best products to buy. Samsung and iPhones are prestigious phones that everyone likes. I asked some students on what they think is the better product and why. What's your name? Charlie. What do you prefer, Samsung or Apple? I prefer Apple. Why do you like this product? I just think that it's easier to use than Android products. What's your name? Justin. What do you prefer, Samsung or Apple? Samsung. Why do you like this product? Um, I feel like there's a lot more to it than an Apple phone because with Samsung, you can have like multiple like apps that are like, different from each other, so you can have like. Hopefully sometime in the future, someone announces which is the better phone. What do you think is a better phone, DMS, Samsung or Apple? My name is Patrick Postle, and I'm signing off for DMS Broadcasting. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are almost all anyone hears about lately. So who's the favorite? I'm going to brief you on how the votes, news, and media see Hillary and Trump. And though these two are not running against each other, they are the most popular and most talked about candidates today. Let's start off with Donald Trump. Trump is a big millionaire, even having his own tower. He is an uncontrollable candidate that has big talk. Some good features about Trump are the millions of dollars and he puts plans into action. However, Trump also has bad traits. Many people say he's racist, and some people have even compared him to Hitler as he tries to build a wall between America and illegal immigrants. A reference from the movie The Boy in the Striped Pajamas is a part where a family member says, he's just making our country great again, talking about Hitler. Does that sound familiar? Trump's slogan, Make America Great Again, is scary close to that reference. Now on to the other most popular candidate, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is a strong supporter of women's equality and is running to try to be the first woman president. The good features about Hillary Clinton are that she went to Yale University and is well educated and she wants equal pay for men and women. However, Hillary Clinton, like many people, has flaws. Many people believe she should be locked up for many crimes that she has committed. Meanwhile, the media is somewhat ruthless on these two, especially Trump with sayings of, like if you think this brick is more presidential than Trump. Now onto the really important stuff the votes. Right now, Hillary Clinton is running against Bernie Sanders, and Donald Trump is running against Ted Cruz and John Kasich. But between the two of them, Hillary is in the lead, according to RealClearPolitics.com. So there you go. There's the update with all the presidential stuff going on in our world right now. What do you think, DMS? Do you think Hillary and Trump will end up running against each other? If so, who do you think will win? And who do you want to win? This is Elizabeth Gammon, signing off from the Discovery Broadcast. Oh, where'd you get that? Oh yeah, I'm in concert band. We just went to concerts this year. Wow, I want to hear more about that. Well, I guess you might as well look at Justin's segment. Hey DMS, it's Justin, and I'm going to talk a little bit about our concert band. Our concert band has been playing for three years and have always been directed by Marty Ruin. We are very experienced and have got some very hard pieces to make it in that amount of time. So in late February, we took our band to Blue Springs to play in competition. We did very well on both of our pieces and that led us to getting a one, the best possible rating. I want to interview a few students to see what they thought about this. My name is Kuro. Jenna. Carmen. I play the trumpet. 
I play the flute. The oboe. Um, actually, I, I feel accomplished because, I mean, I contributed and we got a one, which is the best rating you can get. And not a lot of bands got ones at contests, so I feel pretty accomplished. It's quite the accomplishment. <laughs> I feel pretty good. I think we're a really good band. Uh, somewhat, yeah. Yeah. Have a great Friday, DMS, and hopefully I see you in concert. Current 8th graders' web is coming to an end, which means that 7th graders have applied for web for next year. Today, the 7th graders that applied find out if they got accepted or not with an email after school. Now, let's find out some of the answers to future web leaders' questions with an interview for Mrs. Meebling. How many 7th graders will be accepted into web? Well, depending on the number of sixth graders that we have enrolled here at DMS, we need about 48 eighth graders to become web leaders. Is it hard to manage other activities while doing web? When we have eighth grade web leaders, we really want students to be involved in our school. We want those web leaders to you know, go out for sports. We want them to go out for plays. We want them to be active in our school. So we do whatever we can to support eighth graders as web leaders. So um, if you are involved in something after school, you can still be involved in web. What do you have to attend in the summer? The summer is our big push with web. That's really where the, the big part of our program exists. So during June and July, there's not really anything that we ask of our web leaders. But when August hits, those first two weeks before school starts, we have a work day where we invite all of our web leaders to come to school and, and work through some different pieces to get organized and start planning for our web orientation day. And we also have two training days where we pull together all of our web leaders and we do a ton of activities to train them to be able to help our sixth graders on orientation day. So there's about four days that we need our web leaders to be involved at the beginning of the school year. How often do you meet with the sixth graders? We have Web Wednesdays and Web Wednesdays are once a month. Now let's hear some advice from some current web leaders. My advice for the incoming web leaders is to be yourself. Be positive. Be really fun and still try and get your point across. Don't be afraid. To be like really flexible with things. <laughs> they should know how to have fun with the sixth graders. Be outgoing. Web leaders should be confident. Great Friday, DMS. And I hey, Discovery, this is Pierre, and I'm the host of Student Spotlight this week. This week on Student Spotlight, we're going to be learning about an eighth grader at our school named Carell. We're not going to just learn about how he's a close friend of mine, but also going to be learning about how he's very talented in sports and also at singing. Let's go find out more about him. Uh, first, how long have you been playing basketball and football? Um, I've been playing basketball for 10 years, almost 11, and I've been playing football for four years, almost five. Good. How long have you been singing? Um, pretty much all my life. Do you have an age when you started to sing? Um, well, publicly, like four years old. That's good. That's real good. Um, out of all those three activities, which one is your favorite? Um, probably basketball because, I don't, I don't know, it's just the most fun. So. Oh, beside yourself, who got you into these activities? Uh, my dad, really, because he played basketball and football as a kid, and he was a music major in college, and so he sings a lot, and he plays a lot of instruments. So you sing, you play basketball, and you play football, and you also keep your grades up, too? Yes, sir. That's amazing. Carell also stars in musicals here at Discovery and will be in the next coming up musical here in April called Pimpin'. This is Pierre Thomas signing off from Discovery Broadcasting and also the host of Student Spotlight this week. Have a good weekend, Discovery. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, um, I thought we were done. <laughs> Have, Have a great, great weekend, weekend, DMS.
Nossa. Aí, ó. Ó, ó. 